Hello, I'm Pastor Mike at First Baptist Church. And on the evening, Wednesday evenings, I'm starting a brand new study on how to handle stress. And today's topic specifically is putting on the right yoke. And I'm going to be doing this series for several weeks uh, because I think we're dealing, dealing with a lot of stress. I mean, we, we just are. Uh, this country and with the coronavirus and uh, people not working and just the whole social distancing thing and the physical distancing that we're having to do right now is just maddening um, with, uh, with our emotions and our mental state and even somewhat to our spiritual state. So we need to know how to deal with stress. So let me ask you a question. Are you stressed out? Are you stressed out with work? Are you stressed out at home for some reason? Are you stressed out uh, with this whole, um, uh, the economy kind of uh, not doing real well right now? I mean, are you stressed out? Uh, there are certain things. We, we need to understand a couple different things about stress. Number one is stress can be good and stress can be bad. You know, stress can be something that is helpful to motivate us, to get us working, or it can be a task master. Stress can produce that motivation and development, or it can be um, something that weighs us down physically, mentally, emotionally, and like I mentioned just a moment ago, spiritually. Stress can help us to press on, or it can be unrelenting pressure to the point that it threatens our peace and joy or even steals it completely away. You know, a certain stress, we can feel like we have the entire weight of the world on our shoulders and that it is tearing us apart and thereby taking us straight into the arena or pit of burnout. So stress has two different uh, things that it can do. It can help us or it can tear and uh, wear us out. Uh, there is a good stress, there is a bad stress. And the stress I'm talking about today on how to handle stress is that bad stress, not the little bit of good stress that we need to get us motivated and to help us in the whole area of, of developing um, as a person or even at our jobs. But we're talking about the bad stress here. You know. If you're dealing with stress because of what's going on, I want you to know that God provides relief when we, when we realize and implement the truth of His Word. Let me read something out to you here out of Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. It says this, Jesus said, He said, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now let's develop the context here, because we, can't un, we, can't, we cannot uh, properly interpret until we uh, understand exactly what the context is. So, the Pharisees, during the first century here, right in the area where Jesus uh, was, the Pharisees had placed so many rules and regulations on the people that it was literally weighing them down emotionally and mentally. The people saw religion as a terrible labor that they just could not keep up with. The law that the Pharisees created, I mean, it was just way too much for these guys. And as a result of this, Jesus tells the people who are feeling overly stressed about the Pharisees' religion to come to Him. I mean, these guys, it got to a point where people could hardly function. I mean, they couldn't even move without somehow going against the Pharisees' laws and regulations. And the people were so tremendously uh, weighed down that they were just dragging on the ground. And it was eating them up. It was tearing them apart. And they were suffering greatly. And then Jesus comes along and He says, Hey guys, come to Me. Well, the Pharisees, um, they were uh, not real interested in what Jesus had to say at all, but the people were interested because they were so stressed out over the Pharisaic laws. Well, the law that the Pharisees created being too much and being such a burden and Jesus calling them to come to Him, what Jesus' purpose was, His intent in this, is, what, is that He wanted to free the people from their burden. He wanted them 
to have rest. You know, they were exhausted from the weight they had been carrying. You know, when Jesus told them that they could have rest, here, I want you to really consider this. There's these Jewish people and then uh, who have a great weight of, on their shoulders. Jesus comes and he says, look, I want to give you rest. Immediately, these Jewish people would have flashed back to their ancestors. You know, when they were in Egypt for you know, over 400 years, and for so many of those years, they were under great stress and burden under the slavery and under, under the thumb of Egypt, that when God finally called Moses, Moses brought them out of the promised, uh, out of Egypt and walked them to the promised land. Well, the promised land was the place of rest. That's what God promised them. He, he told them, I will give them rest. I'll give you rest. He's going to take them out of this heavy, burdened environment and place them in an environment of rest. So, when Jesus said that, when Jesus said that he would take his people, if they would come to him, and that he would give them rest, that's exactly what the people would have thought of. They would have thought of the rest of uh, their ancestors, the rest that their ancestors had when they were taken to the promised land out of Egypt. Well, in a very, very similar way, God wants to take what is burdening us. You know, what is it in your life that is weighing you down to the point that stress is taking you over and, and causing your life to not function well? You can't think well. You can't act well. Maybe you're getting sick so often. You know, what is it that is burdening you so much and causing such tremendous amount of stress that, needs, that it needs to be taken out of your life in order for you to, give, to have some relief? Well, God wants to take that very burden. He wants to take it from you, and He wants to give you rest. Let me continue on here in Matthew. Jesus continues, and He, he says a few more things in order to help us to understand how He is able to provide rest. So here's what we got so far. If you are stressed, Jesus says, come to me, and I will give you rest. Well, that's great. How are you going to do that, Jesus? Well, verses 29 and 30 tell us exactly how he does it. Let me read it. it says, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, a yoke is a heavy wooden harness that sits on the shoulders of oxen. This yoke is, is, uh, is attached to a wagon or sometimes a farm implement. And this would uh, sit on the shoulders of the oxen and then the oxen would start to walk and then the pressure of that yoke would sink deep into their shoulders as they're carrying this heavy weight behind them. I mean, it was, it was a strain. It was a difficult task for these animals to do. Well, Jesus, he relates this type of yoke, this heavy, burdened, stressful, straining yoke to the law of the Pharisees. Their yoke, their law, was heavy and difficult for the people to carry. So, here is what Jesus told the people to do. He said to take off the Pharisaic yoke, that is the difficult um, burdens, and put on his yoke that is easy and light. And wouldn't that just kind of free your shoulders up, kind of give you some freedom to move around, taking off their heavy, straining, difficult yoke, and then putting on a simple, easy, light yoke of Jesus. Well, you know, today we don't deal much with the Pharisaic law, but we do yoke ourselves together with heavy burdens or situations that are difficult to deal with. 
you know, those things that cause a lot of stress in our life. We tend to place those yokes on us where our head is in one part and the burden is in the other part. And it is driving us forward with this heavy weight behind us. So we're getting pushed harder. I mean, it's just coming down harder and harder and harder and heavier and heavier onto our shoulders. And we can barely move in life. That's a type of, of yoke that we seem to put on ourselves often. Well, what Jesus says to do is take off those yokes, and sometimes we pile up many of those, take off those yokes and replace it with His yoke. And here's the reason why He wants us to take off those yokes and put on His yoke. Number one is this, He is Almighty God. Number two, being Almighty God, He is strong, powerful, and in control. Wouldn't you rather be in a harness with Jesus, who can take care of any problem, than in a harness with a heavy, burdening stress that absolutely runs you into the ground and ruins your life. Well, I think we would agree that it's much better to carry the yoke of Jesus, to be in His harness, than any burden on this earth. Now, if you're interested uh, in doing that, uh, I want you to consider a few things here. First of all, are you stressed out? you got to ask that question. And for whatever reason, if you are stressed out, then what we have to do is we have to ask Jesus to take off that yoke, that burden, that whatever it is that's heavy on our shoulders. Ask Jesus to take that off and then take His yoke, which is easy and light, and put it on your shoulders. And when you take His yoke, understand this, very important to understand, that when you take His yoke, you go wherever He goes. See, right now, when we have the stress, heavy, burden yoke that we're carrying right now, wherever that burden is in our life, wherever it goes, we have to go with it. So we're moving around with it. We take that off, throw it away. Then we put on the yoke of Jesus. Now, wherever he is, because remember, in a yoke, you have two heads in this yoke. So wherever Jesus goes, we start to go with him. Whatever he does, we start to do because we're harnessed in with him. Now, where does Jesus go? Well, we need to know this because, I mean, we know where stress, where these burdens go. They lead us down the road of stress, and they just ruin our lives. Well, where does Jesus go? Well, Look, Jesus always walks down the road of righteousness. So what do we do? We walk with Him. We live in that. Jesus always provides the resources of life. So what do we do? We go towards those resources that He's providing and we take them. We use them. Jesus always brings His people to spiritually fertile fields. What do we do? We're with Jesus. We start to eat from those fields. Jesus always leads His people to living water. So what do we do? We drink from that water. See, Jesus is always going to take us to the right places that is going to give us rest, to those places that is, that are, that's going to fill up our spiritual stomach, if you will. That's going to satisfy our spiritual mind and our emotions. It's... Jesus is always going to take us to the right place. So when we are yoked with Him, we're going to be moving with Him, going in the right places. And going in the right places is going to provide rest to us. The heavy burdens in life, they're going to bring great stress. They're always going to force us down the road of ruin and disaster. And when we are yoked together with those burdens, then we are going to eat and drink of that disaster. We're going to live that disaster. But when we take that off and place on the yoke of Jesus, which is easy and light, then wherever He goes, which is life, then we start to absorb that life. Now here's how we do this. Here's how we take off the yoke and put on His yoke. Like I mentioned earlier, we first ask God. We pray that God would do this. Secondly, we get into God's Word. We get every bit into God's Word, and we start to listen to Him. We start to change our mind 
our thinking process and get it off of those heavy burdens and onto the person of Jesus Christ. Who is he? What does he have to say to us? What are his promises? What is it that, that he is trying to do in our lives? We get focused on him. So the more that we focus on Jesus and, and accept and kind of receive the uh, promises that he has given us, what I mean by receive the promises, I mean when you read what he has said, you just accept them. This is God's word right here. Uh, he, he's never going to give us something, he's never going to tell us something, and then uh, not provide that in its totality. So we get into God's Word, we get to know Him. You know, 2 Peter 3.18 says to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, let's grow in Him. The more we grow, see, the more we grow, growing is like hands, okay? So the more we grow in, in who our God is, the more we get to know Him, the more we are pushing off the burdens that, of this world, whatever's stressing us out. It's more we're pushing that off. And finally, we're going to get it just over our head and we're going to dump it to the ground. The more we push that off and finally get it off to the ground, the more we do that, the quicker we can get the yoke of Jesus on us. But it all begins with prayer and then getting into God's Word to know who He is, to know what He said about us, to absorb that, to understand that. And the more that happens, the better and the quicker we can get His yoke on us. And then, when we are yoked with Him, we've got to understand that we will then walk with Him wherever He goes. We do whatever He does. And He will always provide life. And the result of all of this is rest. That's what we need. Today, the Christian needs a rest. So take the yoke of stress that you're dealing with now. Get it off by growing in Christ and put on His yoke and begin to enjoy life. Now, next week, we'll be looking again into some other aspects of stress. And I, I want to encourage you to be here it's at Wednesday night on, at 6.30, and we're going to see further what God has to say about stress. So thank you for joining in today.